Welcome back to another Further Pure One revision video. Today we're going to take a look at L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so I think this is chapter 7, if I remember correctly, in uh, the textbook, and it's under the chapter called Methods in Calculus. So it's not the full chapter, it's just a subsection of the chapter, but, um, you know, it's it's quite an important um, topic. It's usually about four or five marks for a question out of this chapter, so let's jump into the questions. Let's take a look at what we're um, dealing with here. So this question here is from exercise 7b, question 6, and we're asked to explain why for part A here we can't use L'Hopital's rule. So let me just write this down. So what we've got here is the limit as x tends to 0 of cosh x over 2x squared. Okay. So, one mark, so we shouldn't expect anything too intensive for this. The thing you've got to consider when you're dealing with L'Hopital's rule is whether it's already in indeterminate form. So how do we do that? Well, we consider what the limit tends to. So we're considering when x tends to 0. So sub 0 into your numerator and denominator. Remember, when we're doing L'Hopital's rule, we don't treat this as an individual function, but a quotient of two functions. So what I mean by that is f of x is cosh x and then as a result my other function is g of x here that's my denominator 2x squared so consider what happens here when you put f of 0 in so f of 0 what would we get well f of 0 that's cosh of 0 and you should know that cosh of 0 is 1 right so f of 0 cosh 0 is equal to 1. Consider the same here now for g of 0. What's g of 0? So that's 2 lots of 0 squared, so that's just quite clearly 0. But this isn't the correct form, okay? So this is not indeterminate. So the reason we can't use L'Hopital's rule, so therefore can't use L'Hopital's rule, L'Hopital's rule, as not in indeterminate form. Okay, so remember it should be 0 over 0. Because this is 1 over 0, we can't apply L'Hopital's rule. And as you can see, that's kind of why they do that little correction in part B there. So it's not in indeterminate form. Okay, so seeing as that's part A out of the way, let's jump into part B here. So I'll try and do it along the side here. Hopefully we should have enough room. So, again, treat this as a quotient of two functions. So, f of x is cosh x. In fact, I've decided I'm definitely going to have room here, so let's just clear it off first. So, start again. So, f of x is cosh x minus 1. Again, let's write our g of x down. That will be 2x squared. Okay, so we've got f of x, we've got g of x. And we don't technically need to show it again because we, we know the numerator will be 0 because it's 1 minus 1. Okay, so it's in indeterminate form, so we can apply L'Hopital's rule here. So remember, we differentiate top and the bottom, so don't use quotient rule. You're not differentiating as a whole function, but you're differentiating f of x and g of x separately. So f prime of x. So if you differentiate cosh x minus 1, hopefully nice and easy, you get hyperbolic side here. Um, so hyperbolic sine of x and then let's differentiate g of x so g prime of x so this one should be really easy and um, that'll give us 4x okay so we've got f prime of x we've got g prime of x now at this stage here again consider whether it's indeterminate so you could do that by considering what happens when you sub in um, 0 right so if you sub 0 in here um, to your f prime of x, well, that'll just be 0. Consider it again with g prime of x, 4 lots of 0. It'll be 0 over 0 again. So what that means is you apply L'Hopital's rule again. So applying L'Hopital's rule, that means we differentiate another time. So we're on the second derivative here now for f of x. And same again here for g prime of x. So differentiating um, this expression here again well hopefully 
nice and straightforward. This will just give us cosh x. Do the same here. So 4x, hopefully this one jumps out here. It's just being 4 out. Nothing too difficult there. And this is where we know doubt that we don't need to apply L'Hopital's rule anymore. Because we've got something other than 0 over 0, we've got this 4 here. We know um, that this is the basically we're at the solution. So how do we get the solution? Well, we know for this one it's the second derivative. So L'Hopital's rule here basically is going to be cosh x as x tends to 0 over 4. So cosh x as x tends to 0, that'll just be 1. So what we end up with here is the limit as x tends to 0 of cosh x minus 1 over 2x squared. That'll be 1 over 4. Okay, And the reason for that is because g prime, prime of x is 4. And the numerator here is technically cosh x. And when cosh x tends, um, or when x tends to 0, this comes to 1. This tends to 1. Okay, So we just get left with a quarter there. So that's part B done. So that's we've applied L'Hopital's rule two times there um, to get our limit of a quad. Okay, so that's that question done. Let's take a look at another one. These questions are always very similar. Um, you can't really vary too far away from it. Um, so, you know, again, it's just another question applying L'Hopital's rule. So let's practice this. So question seven. So from the mixed exercise here, the only difference with this one is that the limit doesn't tend to zero but it tends to pi, okay? So we're considering cos of half x over x minus pi, okay? And x tends to pi. So again here, same procedure. Consider what happens when... Now be careful, don't sub 0 into here, but we're subbing pi, right? Because x tends to pi. So consider what would happen here when x is pi. Remember, we're working in radians here. So, cos of half pi, well, that'll just tend to, uh, that'll just give us zero, right? So you put that on your calculator. So, again, let me just write this down as two functions. So, f of x is cos half x. And then my g of x here is my denominator. x minus pi. Okay. So, we've got our two functions. Consider what happens then when I put f of pi in and g of pi. What we should get is that this is 0 over 0. And if you do that, you'll get cos of a half pi, which is equal to 0. So, f of pi is 0. Do the same here for g of pi, which clearly, pi minus pi will give us 0. So, it's 0 over 0. It's an indeterminate form. So, we can work with this now. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate both of these. f prime of x. Do the same here. g prime of x. Now, hopefully it jumps out straight away. Once I differentiate g, g of x, this x minus pi here, all I get left with is 1. So we're actually going to need to apply L'Hopital's rule one time here. doesn't matter what this f prime of x comes out as. Differentiating cos half x. Hopefully, again, nothing too crazy. This is just kind of your A-level standard uh, differentiation. So, differential of cos is minus sign. We're taking the differential here. So, that bit minus a half. Um, minus a half sign. Half x. Okay. Here now, I've got my f prime of x and I've got my g prime of x. So all I need to consider now is what happens to f prime of x when x tends to pi. You put that in on your calculator, what you will get is that this here, this minus a half sign, half of x, this tends to um, minus a half, sorry. Okay. So what I get left with here is basically I've got f prime of x over g prime of x. Well, g prime of x is 1. And we consider what happens here to f prime of x when x tends to pi, okay? So that gives us minus a half. So we get left with minus a half divided by 1, which just gives us minus 1 over 2, okay? So quite a nice straightforward one. 
usually there's slightly less marks when you've only got to do um, one iteration of L'Hopital's rule. Um, like you're playing it one time. Um, it's usually about five or six when you've got to do it at least two times. Okay. So for that question, the, the value of the limit is minus a half. The next one, very similar. Um, again, only four marks for this one. We've got the limit here. As x tends to 1 of ln x over x squared minus 1. And again, same methods, just like we've previously been doing. I'm going to break it up into two functions. So f of x, always your numerator. That's ln x. Uh, g of x will be my denominator. And that's always the case. So that's x squared minus 1. Again here, consider what happens when you put um, 1 in here, because where x tends to 1, so f of 1. Well, that's ln of 1, and you should be well aware that that is 0. Okay, so ln of 1 is 0. Make sure this happens for g of 1 as well. That's 1 squared, so 1 minus 1 is 0. So, it's an indeterminate form, so we can apply L'Hopital's rule like we, we would, right? So, at this stage here now, just differentiate f of x and differentiate g of x. So, again, quite nice, basically standard um, differentiations. Differentiate ln of x, that just gives us 1 over x. And then if I differentiate x squared minus 1, all I get left with is 2x. Okay. Consider what happens here now when x tends to 1. So, as x tends to 1, f prime of x, well, that'll be 1 over 1, and then g prime of x will be 2, right? So, all I'm going to get left with here is the limit as x tends to 1 of ln x, x squared minus 1. Well, that's just going to be given, basically, it's going to be f prime. 1 over g prime of 1, which is going to give me 1 over 2 there. Okay. And again, it's as easy as that. So I feel like once you've got the basics down with L'Hopital's rule, it's rather straightforward. The question is currently very. The only other type base that you can get is the last one we've got here, where they tell you what the limit is. You've just got to show, using L'Hopital's rule, that that limit is what they tell you. So this is what we've got here. So the limit as x tends to 0 of e to the x minus cos x over x. Okay. So we won't write down that it's equal to 1 just yet. Let's just work it out like we would, and then hopefully get that we get the exact same there, which is 1. So like we always do, let's write down our functions. So f of x, that will be my numerator. So that's e to the x minus cos x. My g of x is my denominator here. Rather easy, it's just x. Okay, so straight away, if you gain if you gain confidence with this, you should probably see at this point here now that I'm only going to do one iteration here um, or one application of L'Hopital's rule because when I differentiate g of x, it'll just be one, right? So. Differentiating, um, in fact, before we differentiate, let's just double check that f of 0 and g of 0 gives me 0 over 0. So f of 0, that's e to 0, which is 1, minus cos of 0, which again just gives us 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, so that's happy days, that works perfect. And then if g is 0, um, just something 0 in here, that's quite clearly 0. So, 0 over 0, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So, now, like we always do, I feel like I'm a broken record at this point, but just differentiate f of x and g of x. So, let's differentiate the, de the denominator first. Uh, much easier, that just gives us 1, right? Differentiate x, you get 1. f of x is a little bit trickier to differentiate, but shouldn't be anything uh, too complex. If you differentiate e to the x, well, that just gives you e to the x, right? Nothing changes there, so it's basically the Spider-Man meme. And then differential of minus cos x. Well, if you differentiate cos, 
cos x, you'd get minus sine x. If you differentiate minus cos x, we get plus sine x here. Okay. So all I need to consider now is what happens um, as x tends to zero. So we can write this now as the limit as x tends to zero <coughs> of e to the x minus cos x over x. Well, that's going to be f prime of zero over g prime of zero. And what will that give us? Well, that's just going to simply give me one, because e to the zero is one, um, plus sine of zero, which is just zero. So that's one plus zero over, well, my g prime of x is just one, so we can't do anything with that. Um, so all I get left with is one over one, which is simply one as required. And there we have it. So four marks for that. That wraps up this video. Hopefully it's helped. Um, any queries, um, if I've made a mistake, please let me know down below. Cheers.